الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين I think it's become very clear that some of the things that I have said are uh, repeated in more than one session and I'm deliberately doing that even though I'm not working really on a particular script that I've prepared in advance or something but just some uh, notes that I've jotted down for me to remember while I'm sharing uh, information in regards to joining the Hausa and um, becoming a Hausa student and some of the if I could say uh, pieces of advice humble pieces of advice that I would give uh, based on my uh, experience myself and also things that I have come across as far as pieces of advice given to us by our own ulama. Now this doesn't mean that I am making some claim of me having uh, implemented these pieces of advice or having reached such high levels where I am in the position to give advice but just sharing pieces of information and having them recorded for those who um, might be interested, who are interested, who are probably already in the uh, Hausa in their early stages and need some kind of boost as far as uh, how they're able to look at things from such a way that would give them that motivation for them to be able to uh, continue or make their decision. Because I do remember when uh, I uh, entered into the Hausa and I was only 16 years at the time, 16 years of age at the time, uh, something that we did not have, um, well obviously we didn't have none of this internet or um, uh, social media or YouTube or websites or anything of that line, not even mobile phones. So it was very, very difficult for me to um, come to the realization that um, there isn't anyone out there that is able to convey simple, basic pieces of information in uh, my mother tongue, which is English. And therefore, it was very much of a struggle for me. Alhamdulillah, one of the greatest blessings that we have in uh, today's society is that we are able to uh, put these pieces of information and experience and advice and things like that so that everyone around the world uh, is able to uh, benefit from it and use it. So that really is something that we should uh, use to our advantage. When we look at the lives of our ulama, and I did mention in the previous segments that one of the important things that we do need to do uh, in order for us to not only be motivated to join the Hausa, motivated to stay in the Hausa and pursue uh, Hausa studies, even though there are many, many challenges ahead of us, is by reading the stories and the lives of biographies of our ulama, past and present. And one of the things that clearly we can see repeatedly, repeated, re repeatedly in the lives of um, the Hausa lifestyle of our ulama is that they started at a very young age. You know, I remember Al Marhum Sheikh Bahajat once told me that he was 14 when he left uh, his city um, in northern. Iran and traveled to Najaf al-Ashraf and he did not return until just entering into the age of 30 and he was a mujtahid at that time as well and um, when we spoke about entering at a young age entering into the house at a young age and what it does occur what it does do to a, a person I'm very sure no one would uh, disagree with that. But this is important to point out because someone might be a bit uh, too minded as to should I finish my bachelor's degree, or should I graduate my university degree and then enter into Hausa or should I cut my degree short 
and enter into Hausa. Some people say, well, you know what, you, you need to have a backup plan. And um, it's not easy for you to go to the Hausa and leave your uni studies or leave your um, high school studies. Well, I would personally, I would not recommend someone leaving their high school studies and going to Hausa. But uh, so they should at least uh, finish their uh, high school and then enter into Hausa. And for Al Mustafa International University, that's one of the prerequisites, it's one of the requirements. If someone is in high school and really adamant about joining the Hausa, then in my opinion, there are things that they are able to do while parallel, while studying their uh, school studies. You know, um, you are able to choose certain courses that you can undergo that would give you that, you know, mental uh, preparation for when you enter into Hausa. So you're not entering into, for example, Arabic grammar or aqa or aqaid or uh, fiqh or anything else bl with absolutely zero information, a blank slate. No, you have some kind of uh, general information about it. That's a very, very good thing. You know, and you, alhamdulillah, you're able to find these kind of uh, courses on YouTube, on websites, uh, Hausa English, Hausa websites and things like that. Um, but as for a u university um, student who, you know, maybe in their second year, in his or her third year, they decided that, you know what, I want to change my direction in life. I want to become a Hausa student. I want to, you know, be able to learn the ulum of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. You know, this is a very, very important decision that you're making. Um, thinking of a backup plan, my opinion, there shouldn't be a backup plan. You don't have any alternative. You shouldn't allow yourself to think of failure, that, well, should I not make it in the Hausa, what am I going to do next? I don't think that's a correct way of, of uh, thinking. You know, I believe that if a person is adamant about entering into the Hausa and studying in the Hausa, then they do so at all costs. You know, even if it means that they um, must, you know, undergo all of the difficulties and the challenges, then let it be. Yes, there are certain um, issues, maybe circumstances or things like that, you know, that might deter a person from continuing. You know, for example, you know, they might have um, a very, very uh, severe case of a sickness and they might not be able to um, s pursue their studies uh, in the Hausa of Qom or Najaf or something like that, and they would need to be back with their family. In which, even in that kind of a case, uh, if they have made that decision, if you have made that decision of, I want to become Talibu Ilm, I want to be a Hausa student, then even in such a case, you're still able to pursue what you uh, wish to achieve. Now, of course, it might take longer, you might have a disruption in your uh, process of your learning and everything else, but at the same time, you know, you are um, carrying on with what you have been dreaming about for a long time. Um, I did mention that there are people out there, you know, who are graduates who are you know, we dentists and pharmacists and surgeons and engineers and uh, qualified uh, people in uh, different areas of uh, business and construction and things like that, and they changed their direction and they came into the Hausa. Some of them uh, kept their, um, if we could say, day job, you know, I've, I, even though it's not a day job because Hausa is a day and night job, but they kept that particular um, career and they also you know pursued Hausa studies on a serious level you know and you know I do know people who became esteemed ulama 
and they have um, these kind of different degrees. And so uh, in these cases, you know, their first and foremost uh, focus, their main priority became their Hausa studies, and that became like a secondary issue. And gradually, gradually, the, that color kind of fragrance started of their other uh, career started to fade away. Some of them, or I would say most of them, just left that altogether and changed their uh, direction and became Hausa students. Of course, you, um, if you're going, if you're in the process or thinking about making this decision, I would also advise you to consult with your local alim, uh, consult with your parents, your family members, and um, consult with someone who knows you very well, a religious person who knows you very well and is able and has information about the Hausa and the system and experience probably with the Hausa and things like that. And they would you know, be able to say to you, you know what, you would fit very well in the Hausa. You would you know, adjust perfectly in the Hausa and you leave your uh, studies, leave your job and just go and join the Hausa. Someone might say, um, well, seeing that I know your personality, seeing that um, I've uh, lived with you for a while, seeing that you know, I've interacted with you, um, it might be difficult for you to adjust into the environment in Al Najaf al Ashraf, or uh, I don't think you, know, you will find it very easy for you to live in Qum al Muqaddasa. So why don't you just finish your degree and why don't you just uh, go there and um, for a ziyara? and then you able, you'll be able to make your decision. Now, um, that has some benefits. It also has a, a disadvantage, and I would say that the disadvantage is that you are postponing uh, your entering into the Hausa studies. I would also say that in uh, some cases, you know, this postponing um, turns from uh, delaying entering or visiting the Hausa and making your final decision from it being three months or four months to it being five, six, seven, eight years, you know. And I have met people who, after 15, 20 years, they still say that, you know, it's a, um, it's a very uh, depressing for me, you know, to continue to remember that you know, how grievous I am that after all this time, I still want to go and enter into the Hausa. And if only I did at this age, but now I'm at this age and um, I have so many other responsibilities, it's pretty much impossible for me at this particular stage in my life to um, go to the Hausa and things like that. So you don't want that to happen to you. You don't, you don't want to keep that um, in your heart, you know, uh, lingering there as a cloud over yourself that you didn't make that um, swift uh, decision, that leap of uh, faith uh, and enter into the Hausa. Again, I would like to repeat that I am not trying to brainwash people into joining Hausa. I'm not in any way saying that absolutely everyone should leave what they're doing and join the Hausa. That makes no sense. You know, uh, each person, as the hadith says, has been crea created with, within the potentials that they have, you know, and this uh, path of life that we choose, the fate and destiny that um, we direct ourselves in is based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for. And therefore, some would um, fit this kind of, um, if I could say, criteria or fit this kind of standard of living, and someone else wouldn't. You know, someone might be good in laboring, someone might good be good in, you know, business studies, someone and, you know, um, becoming a, a, a business person. Someone might be uh, good with visualizing and, you know, uh, art-related issues. 
You know, everyone has someone really just can't um, picture themselves sitting down for hours on end reading. Someone can't picture themselves sitting behind a desk for hours on end, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad in that. If it's halal rizq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting for you, if it is a uh, halal occupation that you are involving yourself in, then be see it as an, an honor and be proud of what it is that you are achieving. And so it's not something that we should shun away from. So yeah, I'd like to make that very clear so people don't misinterpret. Some people might not, don't misinterpret what it is that I'm trying to do here. It's not me brainwashing or encouraging everyone to join Hawza. But if you have that interest in joining Hawza, and number one, you're still uh, double mind, two minded about it, or number two, you are making your decision, then in both cases, you know, these sessions are going to uh, benefit you to uh, clarify some things, uh, inshallah, inshallah, to clarify some things and also to uh, make your decision way uh, better from one side over the other if you are still a little bit confused about what you wish to pursue. Inshallah, we'll continue on um, speaking about some other uh, vital pieces of information that I think would assist all of us as Hausa students. And, and you know, when I'm saying all these things, I say it with a lot of uh, passion because I believe that even today, I'm still able to benefit a lot from uh, these pieces of information. You know, when I read uh, in the previous uh, session, I remembered that hadith of the uh, malaika spreading their um, wings under the feet of Talibu Ilm, of a seeker of knowledge, and uh, Hausa student, you know, that again gave me a big boost in me being proud of um, the direction that I'm in, and, and it, it brought back a lot of motivation for me. Because sometimes, you know, we might feel a little bit down, we might feel that we, you know, haven't really achieved in anything in, in hindsight, you know, and th this is why it's very, very important for us to, you know, uh, revisit all of these pieces of information. And that's why I'm sure that even for my fellow uh, brothers and sisters who are uh, currently Hausa students, they might also, you know, um, feel close to uh, these pieces of information that I am sharing as well. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin.